Hello my friends and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the Magna Carta One Mac 1000. This is the largest pen that I've seen from Magna Carta. Of course we know their Mac 600 which is the one with the FlexNet. And they have several other pens offerings as well that are sold through American retailers as well. Today we're going to take a look at this one. So I had this in mind for quite a while when it was first demonstrated by Pen Chalet, the unboxing. And I looked at it, I thought, you know, it's very expensive for a steel nib pen. But then I was intrigued because this has a very large nib. And I do like pens with larger nibs. But, but this kind of takes it to the next level. So I was kind of intrigued. At one point, I think there was a sale on this through Pen Chalet. I don't remember exactly what percentage, but this pen is sold over $400. I think I got it somewhere in 300s, low 300s. And because I chose the lapis color, I had to wait a little bit longer to get it. Uh, finally, it did arrive and I've been using this off and on for two to three months. And I'm here to give you my two cents about it. So the pen looks very, very similar to the Mag 600 that we have looked at before. I think they're going for a vintage look on this. As an example, I have here Waterman 58. This is the largest Waterman pen I have for comparison purposes. The Waterman 452 is also a, it's a smaller pen from Waterman. Very nice flexible nib. Appears a petite beside the Waterman 58. And even if you look at the Montblanc 149, it kind of dwarfed. By the Waterman 58 and the Jinhao 9019 is also dwarfed by the Waterman 58. So, if we take the Waterman 58 as a, one of the larger pens and compare that to the Mag 1000, it is dwarfed by Mag 1000. So, this is a quite a large pen, pro the largest pen in my collection, of course, in terms of the nib. Um, the cap is similar to the Magna Carta 1 Mag 1000, going for the vintage look. It's actually a little bit nicer done than the Mag 600 that I have. The engraving here are not as sharp. I feel like it's they've done a better job on this one compared to the other one. And the the pattern on this is kind of cartoonish. I don't know who did this, but the lapis color is very nice. I like it. Top and bottom finial. They don't really have much in terms of stamping or markings. So quite basic aside from the ring. Uncapping this pen takes one, just about two turns. The threads are not really that sharp, but you shouldn't be holding it. I shouldn't be holding it by the threads anyways because this pen is very long. So I'd be holding it closer to the nib. The nib is very, very large. I don't know what number it is that they call it. It is marked by India and then 12-15. I don't know what that means. And then stamped logo. I like the heart breather hole. I opted for a fine nib and as we'll see it does write like a true fine nib fountain pen. The nib is actually removable. It's friction fit. You can just pull it out. Unscrewing this will reveal the very very minuscule very minuscule tiny tiny converter. This reminds me of that show called Curb Your Enthusiasm, where Larry David was visiting the guy in the hospital and the nurse was telling him about things that were small and large. And he was saying, this: the problem is not this small converter, but rather the large nib. If you know that show and you have seen that episode, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So to me, looking at this pen, looking at this body in the net, I'm trying to contain myself. Um, looking at this nib and look at, looking at this converter, it's actually comical, to be honest. So I'm a physician. I will tell you that this seems like an athlete that has been using a lot of steroids. They might have very, very big muscles. But I know about something about them that's pretty, pretty tiny, minuscule. This, like, why would they do this? You know, just find a way to fit one of those Jinhao converters in here. This pen deserves a lot better. 
from my experience with the Mag 600, this pen can be easily eyedropper. And my Mag 600, I never used the, the converter. I always used the eyedropper. Otherwise, considering the nib, the size of the nib and the size of the body of the pen, the pen is actually proportionally not bad. But just this, this converter, it just like, it's hard to get past this, okay? And let's just close our eyes, not look at that. Anyway, so this, otherwise this pen is very well proportionated, if that's a word. Comparing this to, I think what they're going at is the Namiki Emperor trying to see who has the bigger nibs. The Emperor is actually a little bit taller. And in the body section, I think they're about the same, the same girth. The Emperor may be a little bit thicker in both body as well as the as well as the uh, the cap area the cap is taller although i think the emperor does not stay the same width it kind of tapers towards the end kind of work like a cigar shape but the mag 1000 has a flat body pretty much except for the end here where it tapers a little bit downwards does it post yeah of course this pen posts this pen posts very well it is ridiculous but it posts it posts very securely it's not going to fall down. It is going to scratch over here, but that's fine. If you're a poster, post away. I think this is a great posting pen, but it kind of looks ridiculous if you post it. So I generally don't post my pens, but for those who prefer to post, it, good news is that it will post. That brings us to the nib comparison. The nib, the number 15 nib on the Namiki Emperor is very, very easily dwarfed by this number 1000 steel nib on the Magna Carta. So really like this emperor is feeling very, very self-conscious about its nib size when standing beside the Mag 1000. Now is the larger nib, does it mean it's better? Uh, that remains to be seen. So I don't want to say too much more about this. Why don't we just go and do a writing sample and see how this number 1000 nib behaves on paper. I have put in here recently favorite ink from Mont Blanc. That is Gustav Klimt. Very, very nice. So this pen seems like it doesn't have a nice feet to pair with that fine nib. It has zero problems keeping up with writing. It is a little bit bouncy. It's not a flex nib by any means, like the Mag 600, but you can see that you can get quite a bit of line variation if you want to push it. I wouldn't do that because it may not bounce back all the time, so I'll stop it right there. And the writing experience is very, very smooth. So this is a very nice, very nice steel nib. It's as nice as any other steel nib. It's as soft as uh, it's as smooth as any other steel nib. It is very, very close to the gold nibs in terms of quality of contact with the paper. If I wrote this and compared it to a 14 karat or 18 karat gold nib, that's a little bit stiff like the platinum ones or the some of the pilot nibs. It's really hard to tell apart. This has some very, very nice, pleasant feedback. It kind of feels like the what the sailors should, their pencil-like feedback. 
but none of that scratch that I get from my Sailor 1911 larges. It's actually just more pleasant. I'm surprising to find that. So the running experience is not a problem. It's absolutely almost perfect in terms of the quality of you know the contact with the paper where the rubber meets the road. Um, and I can definitely endorse the quality of writing of this pen. The looks of it are very, very nice. It's a beautiful pen. It's oversized. It is a conversation starter. It's hard to carry around as a daily user, but having this on a desk at work or at home, it's a nice piece to even just look at. I have this lapis lazuli color, which is very, very nice. I like it, but it comes in like a million colors, so you can choose whatever you want. So those are my two cents about overall experience with this pen. Would I recommend this pen to others who want, who are into fountain pens or want to get into fountain pens? The answer is like as a starter or your first, second, third pen. No, this is not the right pen. This is not really, it's very unwieldy. You can't carry this with you for day to day use very easily. There's not a lot of cases, not a lot of pen cases or pen boxes that would accommodate this size of pen. And that nib is not for everybody. I have larger hands and I don't have problem using it because I, I have over time adapted to use smaller and larger pens with relative ease. But I have wrote with this for like 10 minutes and then I feel like maybe I should switch pens. So it's not a good pen to keep writing with for long sessions. It is very pleasant when you, the time you spend with it. So you have to budget your time, use it like a tree, if you will. So again, if you are into fountain pens very deep and you have to have the latest in the weirdest pens. I think this is actually an interest, interesting pen to have in your collection, especially if you're a pen collector. I think it's an interesting pen to have in your collection. It to me is the largest nib I have that by itself is a conversation starter, but it's also not, it's not a bad nib. It's very large. It's super smooth. It is, I would say as smooth or smoother than the, any of the Jing Hao's or the Hong Dian's that I have which by themselves are much smoother than some of my Italian pens. So keep that in mind. You get go to a pen show, I think Hardik and them, these guys are almost in every pen show. They're very nice to chat with, take a look, take a, do a writing experience with, experience writing with them, with the Mag 1000 and see how you feel. I, I'm really, really interested to know, to hear what people think about this pen. I don't think many people have written with it or purchased it. But I'm really interested to hear what others have to say who have this pen. Do let me know. I thought I'd just give this quick review on this pen. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope to hear from you. And we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.